Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come to you once again. This hour of teaching and preaching that you open up our ears and open up our hearts to receive the word that is able to save our souls, God, to bring us out of darkness into your light. Where the devil had us captive, God, you can free us up through the word. Oh, God, your word comes, God, to rebuke, to reprove, to build, to cast down, to pluck up, to tear down, but ultimately to build us up again, Father. So we thank you for putting us on the potter's wheel. Oh, God, whatever you need to do, God, do it today. That we can be better, that we can grow. Oh, God, that we can understand, God, in these last days that your word is able to keep us from falling. So now, Lord, I move out the way and I ask the anointing, the Holy One, the Holy Spirit, the one that teaches, the one that preaches, the one that comforts, the one that delivers, that breaks chains. God, we ask that you do it now by your power and your authority in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we just clap our hands? Amen. What a blessing and an honor to be back in the house of the Lord, to see all of you once again. To know not over the week, I didn't get no call to say someone done went on to be with the Lord. But look at us, we're here today, and for that we ought to tell the Lord thank you. Nobody, you know, uh, uh, is, is seriously hurt, amen. We do want to pray for um, Mother Prather's father, if y'all don't mind. We need to pray for him, amen. Because how many know prayer changes things? Prayer is able to go where you can't go. Amen. But the prayer of faith can make her father whole. And we believe in that for you. Amen. Amen. We know it's heavy on your heart. But the Lord is a lifter today of your heart. Amen. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think according to your faith. The power that is working in you today, God is able to bring your dad out the bed of affliction. Amen. Jesus sent the word. Remember there was a man, the centurion man, daughter who was sick. And he went to Jesus. And when he went to Jesus, he went to Jesus in faith. He already was believing that Jesus could heal his daughter. And before he got there, the word was already sent. To the centurion's household. And when he got back, his daughter was sitting up. How many know God's word is powerful? It ain't nothing to play with. It's real. Amen. And it's able to heal. Amen. And we believe in that for you. We even believe in a good report today. Amen. Because God is that kind of God. Amen. And we got to realize what hurt one should hurt us all. Amen. Because we don't ever know. When I will turn coming, I say that, amen, with emphasis because we never know in sickness because none of us exempt from sickness, none of us exempt from tragedy, none of us exempt from these things that are going on in the world. But one thing we can do, we can come together in love, amen, in love, and we can support each other, amen. And that's what God wants us to do. We thank the Lord for everybody, our deacons today. Amen. Our mothers, our ushers. Amen. The choir singing. Oh God, y'all song, song today. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our children. Amen. This great body. Amen. My lovely wife. Amen. Love you. We thank God for everybody. Our visitors. But more so, we thank God for this word. Can we go there? Let's go to, amen, back to Galatians chapter 5. We've been teaching on walking in the spirit. How many know we got to walk in the spirit? We got to be spirit walkers. And I'm talking about walk in righteousness, walk in holiness, walk in purity, walk in honest. We got to be God's chosen people. We are a peculiar people, a holy nation. That's for to be show forth the praises unto God. Letting people know that Jesus is soon to come and he's still saving souls. How many know that's the ultimate goal that we are out to do? Now, this morning in Sunday school, that's what it was talking about. Jesus was talking about the giving a parable about the marriage. And he gave out invitations to ones that he thought was going to come. Hmm. Give them out, mother. Invitation. That's something you give somebody an invitation and they blow it off. 
I ain't gonna go. Huh? Yeah, I know they gave it to me. I ain't worried about that. Huh? Personal invitation. Jesus gave them out. He was saying in the parable, he gave them, they gave, the king gave them out, they didn't want them. So that made him upset. So he sent his servant out and said, go out. And go get those that are poor. Those that are evil. Blind. Bring them on in. Amen. They came, and it still yeah. wouldn't feel the Lord. Then he said, go into the hedges yes. and the highways yes. Yes. and tell them to come. Yes. What is this saying? God ain't leaving nobody out. Amen. The time we're living in, it don't matter who you are. There ain't no big eyes and no little you. Yes. The Lord is beckoning to all who would yes. come. Come to the feast. Oh, yes. He said, I already prepared it. Yeah. All you got to do is come. Yeah. And it's a sad thing when somebody done prepared something good for you and you don't want it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But believe it or not, people are rejecting the word. Yeah. Rejecting yeah. Jesus every day. Yeah. But one day he's going to come. Yeah. And he said, those that didn't take the invitation, uh -huh. they're not going to be able to partake in this. Yeah. So I don't know about you, I don't want to be left out. Amen. I do not want to be left out because it's real, it's coming. People may not see the signs, but I'm seeing them every day. Amen. One day it's hot. Yep. <laughs> huh? Yeah. One day the tree budding. Yeah. Next day it's going back in. Yeah. Huh? See, we, the word says we'll never know. We ain't going to be able to, you know, be able to tell the seasons. The weather men, they have it, they be puzzled. I can see them. They don't be saying one thing and something else happen. Yes, sir. Because guess what? Time is in God. Yes, sir. So we got to be ready, saints. Yes, sir. We got to be ready. For the last two weeks, we dealt with the flesh. And I'm going to tell you something. That helped me. Because I take this word literally for myself. Because I realize, just as I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. And I have to apply it to myself. And I took examination. I said, Lord, I don't want any of these fleshly desires to be a part of my life, to be attached to me. You know why? Because those, dead, those things are dead. Those things called death. And I don't want death on me. I don't want the stench of, uh, of death on me. I don't know if any of y'all smell a dead body before it's, it's just not a great smell. When I was over in Bosnia, we had to guard massive graves. Mm. Biggest football fields. Three of them. We was over the, over the um, watching over those grave sites. We couldn't stay there for three days because of the smell. And literally, when we left those, those grave sites and went back to our base, we had that smell all in our clothes, all in your hair. That's just how strong the stitch of death was. And it's the same way in the spirit. If we allow these fleshly things to attach to us, it's a smell. And I don't know about you, but we got to be washed with the word of God. That's why he said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And old things are passed away. Behold, things are new. Yes. Now today we want to emphasize on um, the other side, the flip side. Somebody said the flip side. Because in verse Galatians chapter 5, verse 21, at the end of those fleshly things, it said, those that do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. Now how many believe that? Amen. Yes. 